<clears throat> Don't worry, children. I'm sure the authorities will catch up with Count Olaf very soon. No, no, you'll never have to deal with that terrible man again. Before we leave, perhaps there's time for just one last stop. Klaus and Sonny. It's addressed to us. Look at all these postmarks. It's been to England and Rome and Kenya and Iceland. I don't even know where these are from. Who's it from? Mom and Dad. the letter. The letter that never came. Dearest children, since we've been abroad, we have missed you all so much. Certain events have compelled us to extend our travels. One day, when you're older, you will learn all about the people we have befriended and the dangers we have faced. At times, the world can seem an unfriendly and sinister place. But believe us when we say that there is much more good in it than bad. All you have to do is look hard enough. And what might seem to be a series of unfortunate events may, in fact, be the first steps of a journey. We hope to have you back in our arms soon, darlings. But in case this letter arrives before our return, know that we love you. It fills us with pride to know that no matter what happens in this life, that you three will take care of each other with kindness and bravery and selflessness, as you always have. And remember one thing, my darlings, and never forget it. That no matter where we are, know that as long as you have each other, you have your family, and you are home. Your loving parents. Passing the torch is a rite of passage that can take many forms, but perhaps the least known and most surprising is the passing of a spyglass. Dear reader, there are people in the world who know no misery and woe, and they take comfort in cheerful films about twittering birds and giggling elves. 
there are people who know that there's always a mystery to be solved, and they take comfort in researching and writing down any important evidence. But this story is not about such people. This story is about the Baudelaire's. And they are the sort of people who know that there's always something. Something to invent, something to read, something to bite, and something to do to make a sanctuary, no matter how small. And for this reason, I am happy to say the Baudelaire's were very fortunate indeed.